Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we all knew this was going to come out, but now it finally looks like that the ACLU has been lying. We knew this was going to come out, and obviously everyone has been waiting on tiptoes and shattered glass, waiting to see if they would actually respond. But they haven't, because they know they're in deep doo-doo. Well, what we're going to take a look at today, ladies and gentlemen, is a couple of things that, you know, that the name's Q, QWERTY on Twitter has posted. And we're also going to take a look at Frank Drebin. Guys, if you are not following Frank Drebin, this is his Twitter handle. Go and follow him. They are absolutely hilarious. And to be honest with you, Frank Drebin is one of my favourite characters of all time. So naturally, every single time I see a tweet by Frank Drebin, I automatically hear it in Leslie Nielsen's voice. And I don't know why, it just makes it even funnier. So this is the first one we got. So this is the checklist that Frank Drebin has put out. AH has lied about. Donations. This. Op-ed. Destroyed penthouse. Vehicle. Dog smuggling. Held hostage. Injuries. Illegal assistant. Burnt painting. JD's finger. Only hit JD in defense of sister. Doesn't drink or do this. Is an actor. And I love how all of these are ticked. And I can just, in my mind, I just got Leslie Nielsen saying each of these out like, hmm. Donations. Up ed, you say. You know, it's just everything is going through my mind. I just cannot stop laughing. So he did actually post two little snippets of this, which, again, thank you to Tug. That Tug is just amazing. We always cannot get enough of that wonderful Tug. And these are the things that he posted because, obviously, these have been out there and it's really nice to see that people are starting to look at these and be like, right, okay, yeah. I'm on about the people who were against Johnny Depp. The ones who basically said, oh, well, the judge has said this. Even though the judge has not convicted Johnny Depp of anything. So this is what we have. Instead, I have attempted to promote good in the world and to advocate an end to this. I have sought to use my public persona to speak out on an issue that was extremely meaningful to me and millions of other women and men every year. I have spoken out about this in public, but I have always avoided specifically referencing Johnny or recounting this against me, not only because I wanted to move past that phase of my life, but also because I was constrained by the terms of a strict confidentiality agreement that Johnny had insisted upon as part of our divorce settlement. If you can cast your minds back, people, we've actually gone over this so many times regarding the NDA agreement that Johnny and AH had to have been done as part of the divorce settlement. With her going to the uh, Washington Post and doing her little op-ed, straight away, that was against it. Because she, de- even though she may not reference Johnny, everyone knows it's about Johnny. She broke the confidentiality agreement. With that, she should have to give the $7 million back to him because she has broken it. But we all know what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen. But then there was actually another interesting fact because this was right here. Number three, obviously, statement. Amber says here, I received your red line version. I think the edits make perfect sense. I had one thought. However, In the attached statement, I highlighted the one part that I'm curious to see if there's perhaps another version of it we could keep in there. Maybe instead of, two years ago I sought a temporary restraining order from my then husband? We could do something like, two years ago after successfully acquiring a temporary restraining order, would it be okay then, or some version of that? And obviously with that, that has made a lot of people go, Ooh, that's interesting, because basically, we all know for a fact, the ACLU and her, they've caught together, they're listening around like, what can we do, what can we say here? Oh, I know, if we say this instead of my then husband, they, you know, that's easy, that's fine, because it's not going to go him then, we think we're so clever, which is very true. But anyway, Frank put out another one. What these communications reveal is that AH's op-ed was always about smearing Johnny Depp. Its sole purpose was to defame him. Her victim escaped her and she wouldn't allow it. How many times have AH and her lawyers lied straight to the faces of the VA judges? Villainous. And obviously we saw the first one there was regarding the two years ago successfully acquiring the temporary restraining order. But this is the other one that he posted. 
I reviewed it and spent some significant time on it to make sure that there would be no meritorious claim that could be brought against her in connection with a defamation or related type of tort claim, and ideally, with that in mind, to minimise the possibility of her ever being sued in connection with publishing it. That one right by there just screams, yeah, we've looked over it, you're good to go, no one can sue you now. That's exactly what they've done. And that is absolutely disgusting, especially when you put that with all the other ones that we've seen in this video. The risk near the time saying two years ago after successfully acquiring a temporary restraining order, instead of two years ago I sought a temporary restraining order from my then husband. Is that they are literally saying, oh well if you take out the word husband, no one's gonna think it's Johnny Depp, ha ha ha. No, that's not how this goes. But again, no, we know what the ACLU and her lawyers are actually like at this moment in time. I really don't seem to understand how they think they can get away with it. But it's just interesting to see that these people would actually go around and think and say, yeah, I've edited this for you. You shouldn't get sued, it's fine. Nothing's going to happen to you. No way is Johnny Depp going to read this and think, ooh, she's talking about me here because he's not going to do that. But it's like, this is it. And it's really great to see that in the actual comments for QWERTY, for this one, for the two years ago after successfully, you've got Julie W. Perjury. How many counts of it now? Seriously. John Waldman Lama. Someone should really keep count. And it's so good. And again, this is the one that I absolutely love. It's the, I've always avoided mentioning Johnny or recounting my experiences. For me, she has been getting paid for nothing other than recounting her experiences for years. Which is very, very true. And one of the funniest things about all of this is... She literally has nothing else going for her... Except for Aquaman 2. She is literally not getting anything else. Because no one wants her. That's what I think is absolutely amazing. Because, well, people have seen right through her. Yes, she was in the Stan TV show... But again, no, that hasn't exactly done great numbers. People lambasted the first episode. They were like, it's boring. It's rubbish. What the hell's going on? This is not like the book. That's what I think is absolutely hysterical. Because no one wants to see anything that she's in. After Aquaman 2, it'll be very interesting to see where her career goes. Because, like, uh, like Speaker the Mignon has said... She has literally been paid over the last four to five years just talking about Johnny Depp. She did Aquaman, yes, but she was in Aquaman when she was with him because that's when she got hired for Justice League. And obviously a few things before is when they started getting things together. So obviously the way to look at this is ACLU and AH, they have committed so much perjury now that this cannot go any further. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe, hit that notification bell for future updates, and I'll see each and every one of you soon.